Let's turn it up to 11. Hey gang, Tim here at Core Electronics and today we are making a 10 watt Bluetooth stereo speaker with this, a Bluetooth 4.2 audio receiver board, the MHM38. And we're doing it with absolutely zero code. So let's get started. The end goal here is to have a formidable USB powered plug and play boombox and a full understanding of all the electronic components. The MHM38 module is a Bluetooth audio receiver with stereo amp and two loudspeaker outputs. When powered, it can play music from a smartphone wirelessly or via a computer through USB data. These tiny boards pack a huge punch, letting you drive two 5 watt speakers very loudly and doing so with a connectivity range of over 20 meters. That's like 10 times further than here. For more knowledge on these boards, come check the full write-up, link down below. On the table before me is everything you're going to need. You're gonna need that Bluetooth audio receiver module, you're gonna want two enclosed speakers, and a micro USB to USB cord. Naturally, you're gonna need a powered location to plug the USB end into. If you take a look at the Bluetooth product page, you can see a great schematic to follow through with. There are multiple options when it comes to powering this setup. Know that you're also going to need to solder some connectors together. So soldering equipment is a must. You can minimize the amount of soldering required with a universal crimping pliers and JST PH two pin connectors. When you have the Bluetooth module in hand and unboxed, you're gonna be presented with everything you can see right here. The first step is to solder these two female connectors straight to the module. If you prefer, you could also just solder wires directly to this board. Use Flux and Bluetack to make this process easier. With that complete, we can now turn our attention to connecting our two speakers. Make sure to use heat shrink and slip it over the wire before making the connection. Twist the wires together, solder the speakers red to blue positive and black to yellow ground. This is a bit of a hack, but know that you can use the middle of the soldering iron to shrink the heat shrink. Once all connections are made, your hardware should look a lot like this. It's a good time to note here, the output of the two power amplifiers cannot be connected in parallel and cannot have the two negative poles connected together. If you were to do this, the module's onboard power amplifier chip is going to be damaged. If you only wanted a mono speaker, check the description. I have a Bluetooth receiver board down there, which is perfect for you. At this point, simply connect up your hardware with a micro USB port that is powered. The power can come from a USB charger, a computer's USB port, or literally anything that can supply stable current to the system. It's gonna make a nice noise, indicating that it's ready to be paired with our Bluetooth device. When unpaired, the blue indicator light is going to flash quickly. When a Bluetooth device is connected, the indicator light will stay on. Lastly, when Bluetooth audio is playing, the indicator LED is going to flash slowly. So let's pull out our phone and open up the Bluetooth settings inside it. Start by turning on Bluetooth connectivity. You'll then see the MHM38 board right there. Click on it and your board will respond with a nice little sound bite. Nice. As you can see, we have now paired our device and the LED light is solid. Now that our system has been paired, if you try to search for this Bluetooth module with a different phone, you're not gonna be able to find it. Not until you disable your connection here. So with all connected and wired up and ready to go, it's time to put our system to the test. Open up your favorite YouTube video and check it out. <laughs> Wow. wow, that was pretty intense. All right, <laughs> it was really loud. So as you can see, you can control the volume directly from your phone. Now, this is also a good place to mention this. This module does not have any input or output options for auxiliary headphone ports. It also does not have the capability to easily add user interface buttons like sound up, volume, or mute. All the audio control is managed by your phone or the connected computer. If you do want all these features, I have a Bluetooth module for you, linked down below. Naturally, I had to make a boom box for this system. So I whipped one up in Fusion 360.
3D printed in PLA, laser cut a back to it, and assembled it. Without this case, the speakers vibrate very intensely, particularly on flat surfaces when playing loudly. A case like this will prevent that and improve your audio fidelity. Watch my speed run of the build process right now. If this USB boom box takes your fancy, feel free to download it and print it too. All the files are in the main article, link in the description. And if you don't have a 3D printer or laser cutter, or if you just simply prefer to build in a different medium, then do that. I have seen some amazing boom boxes being made from modified cigar boxes and even better ones from wood, stone, or PVC pipes. There's nothing cooler than making your own unique build. Shall we turn it on and hear what it sounds like? I think we should. <laughs> That'll do. That'll do. And it, and it gets louder than that. And I'm, I'm too shy to make it loud right now. There's too many people being busy making sure that the orders get to your door. At the moment, this device isn't portable. So as soon as I take this out, it's going to turn off. If you wanted to fill this with some LiPo batteries, this Bluetooth module is still a perfect option. Check out the article for exactly the pieces you need because I've explained it fully right there. With it correctly wired up, any 3.7 volt LiPo battery could be utilized safely. With this extra componentry, we could even make this switch on the top do something other than just look pretty. Hell, we could even add some audio reactive LEDs inside as well. And it would take full advantage of the fact that the back is transparent. That'd be really cool. The aspect of case building is so enjoyable for electronics. It's perfect for a DT program for a school or just a weekend craft project. I just want everyone to know the electronic aspect of this can be dirt quick and easy to sort. There's no code and basically it's simple plug and play. And truly a 10 watt speaker can really pack some noise. So until next time, stay cozy. Oh, 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 oh,